Hi, I'm Jude from HeadFi.org. This is HeadFi TV episode four. In this episode, we're going to talk about two headphones. One is a legend, a classic, a veteran. The other, a newcomer to challenge that veteran. The classic is this, Sennheiser's HD 2512. The HD 25 for many years has been immensely popular with uh, the pro audio community, with the DJs, broadcasters, and the like. It's also really popular at HeadFi in our community. Uh, frequently recommended as one of the top um, choices uh, for a portable reference over ear headphone. Sometimes the top choice. If you've heard it, you'd understand why. Now the newcomer is this, Biodynamics DT1350. And in my estimation, this is Biodynamics direct shot at Sennheiser aiming right at the HD25. And uh, so the question is, does it score a direct hit? Well, that's what we're going to talk about in this episode. Now, I didn't want to spend too much time talking about the specifications provided by the companies, but I am going to flash them on the screen. Now, while you're looking at these, I just wanted to point out a couple of key specs. Nominal impedance first. Um, the Biodynamic DT1350 has a nominal impedance of 80 ohms. The uh, Sennheiser HD25 has a nominal impedance of 70 ohms. Uh, another spec I wanted to point out, you'll see that the, uh, the, the sensitivity rating uh, shows the HD25 to be the more sensitive of the two headphones. And in my experience, I've found that to be true. Now, given that both of these headphones essentially have the same target audience, uh, it, you'd probably imagine that there are some similarities, and, and you'd be right, there are. Uh, of course, there are also some marked differences. Let's start with price. The Bayer DT1350, being that it's brand new, is hard to find discounted. At least I haven't been able to find it discounted online. So expect to pay right now the MSRP, which is $299. The HD25, on the other hand, starts at about $200. Now, let me explain what I mean by starts. Um, there are actually two versions of the HD2512 currently. There's the all black version that most of you are familiar with, just the normal HD2512. Uh, that one does start at about $200 on the street. The version you're looking at here, though, with all this blue on it, is the Sennheiser Adidas HD2512. This is a co branded edition, and it's a special edition. It's also more expensive, and you're paying for the looks because they're essentially the same headphone. This goes for $250 on the street. And again, the only thing that you're paying for uh, is the looks. Now, for me personally, I love the way it looks. So for me, it's worth the price, but I know a lot of you wouldn't pay the price, the $50 difference, uh, just for the appearance, um, even though it does look really cool. Or some of you might just prefer all black. Um, if that's the case, then again, consider the starting price of the HD25, 200 bucks, and therefore $100 less than the DT1350. Now, in terms of design, you can see, even with me just holding them up like this, that there are obviously some similarities. Now, both of these headphones are closed supraorals. Supraoral means that the ear pad rests on top of your ear as opposed to being large enough to go all the way around it. As far as isolation goes, both isolate extremely well, as good or better than any other supraoral headphones I've used. Um, and I'd actually have to give the edge to the DT1350 in this regard by just a little bit. Uh, in my experience, it isolates even more than the HD25, which is saying something because this isolates extremely well. Both have split articulating headbands, which I actually like a lot. Um, I split them about this much for both models. I find it to be more comfortable on top of my head that way. Both have rotating articulated earpieces. On the HD25, the left side articulates in both directions, swings out of the way in both directions. And that's handy to have if you just need to hear quickly what's going on around you. With the uh, DT1350, both earpieces rotate in both directions. Now in terms of weight, the DT1350 is a little bit heavier than the HD25. The DT1350 weighs about eight ounces, this about 5.7. You can see why when you look at the construction. The DT1350 is made mostly of metal. The HD25 is made mostly of plastic, and it is very light. Now, despite the fact that the HD25 is made mostly of plastic, it has, over the years that it's been out, earned a reputation for being extremely durable. So I wouldn't let its plastic construction deter you one bit as far as durability goes. The almost all-metal DT1350 um, obviously is a new model, so its durability hasn't been tested over time yet, but I feel very confident that um, as the years go by, it will also earn a reputation as a very durably built headphone. 
Now, both the HD25 and the DT1350 have single side entry cables. On the HD25, it's a little less conventional because it enters on the right side. The DT1350 has more conventional left side cable entry. Now, if you look at both cables, you'll see that the HD25 has a thicker cable than the DT1350. If you're worried about the DT1350's cable strength, however, I wouldn't. Biodynamics rates the cable at 200 newtons of force, or over 45 pounds of force. Both the Sennheiser HD25 and the DT1350 come terminated in mini plugs, and both come with a quarter inch adapter. I much prefer the HD25's right angle plug, especially for a portable headphone. You can see it works really well with a portable device. I think that works better than this. I think that sticks out too far. So I wish Biodynamics would have gone with a right angle plug. It's not a deal killer, but it's worth mentioning. Now in terms of comfort, I find both headphones similarly comfortable. Both have high clamping force. They grip your head pretty tightly, which is to be expected with a pro audio focused headphone. Uh, that said, even with the high clamping force, and I have a pretty large head, I still find both comfortable for at least a few hours of use. After a few hours, they can both start to get a little bit uncomfortable on the ears. I do have to give a very slight advantage to the HD25 versus the DT1350 because it has a slightly larger diameter on the ear pads. And I find that makes it just, again, slightly more comfortable. Again, a slight difference, but maybe worth mentioning. One area the DT1350 does have an advantage is comfort when worn around the neck. Now I know, we're talking mostly about wearing these on your ears, but every once in a while, well, actually a lot for me, I like to wear the headphones around my neck. And this is where the, D the DT1350 has a substantial advantage. The earpieces fold flat. With the HD25, they do not. And so uh, when it sits flat, it's better about getting out of the way of your neck and your chin. And uh, they're just much more comfortable for me to wear around my neck when I'm not wearing them on my head, on my ears, I mean. And that's an advantage. Another advantage that the Biodynamic DT1350 has over the HD25 in folding flat is that it comes with this really cool case. And the, the DT1350s sit flat in the case, and it makes for a more compact carrying headphone than the HD25. So I actually find them to be more portable than the HD25. Now, of course, the most important question for most of you is going to be, how do they sound and how do they compare? And in that, there are certainly more differences than there are similarities. Again, the Sennheiser HD25 is a headphone a lot of you are familiar with. Um, either through reviews or having heard it yourself, you're probably at least somewhat familiar with its reputation and its sound signature. The HD25 has a really solid bass foundation, not through overemphasis, just through really good extension and a solid presence, but it's not really overemphasized at all. The mid-range is relatively neutral, and it's when you get to, though, the treble, that it takes on its characteristic sound, in my opinion. The treble has a peakiness in the low to mid treble range that gives it an immediately engaging, exciting sound. And if you consider the Sennheiser family of headphones from their mid-range to their top of the line, the HD25 is really a sort of black sheep uh, in the family. Uh, the most fun sounding in that range, I'd say. But fun sounding isn't necessarily always good. Now, I will say this though, if you listen mostly to electronic pop rock. If that makes up the bulk of what you listen to, then I would, I think I'd recommend the HD25 over the DT1350. But I listen to pretty much all genres, and uh, uh, that brings me to the DT1350. The DT1350 is a more reference headphone, in my, in my opinion, and to my ears. It has a very solid bass foundation through a little bit of upper bass emphasis, but also very good extension. The mids are richer than with the HD25 to my ears. Uh, there's some mid-range mid bloom and mid emphasis. I like it. Um, I like the way that sounds. And it's treble. The peakiness that you hear with the HD25 just isn't there with the treble here. But the extension to my ears still is good. So overall, I find this to be a more reference headphone. Additionally, it has better imaging to my ears than the HD25. The HD25 images well but the, the DT1350 just trumps it a little bit in that regard too. Now, oh, one thing I wanted to mention real quick with the DT1350 though, is if you put it on your head, if right when you get it, you put it on your head and you're not getting the sound that you were hoping for, try moving it around. One downside to the DT1350, but you get used to it when, when you use it, so it's not a downside for long, is it's very sensitive to my ears and in my experience, 
to its position on top of your ears, more so than with the HD25. So play around with that a bit. Once you kind of know where it goes, uh, you'll be able to get it sitting right um, uh, 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 in no time. So I wouldn't worry too much about that, but it's something worth mentioning. So I guess the question really comes down to this, which one of the two would I recommend? And, and that's kind of a tough question. Um, again, $100 separates them, so that's going to be a factor for a lot of you right there. But again, if you're, if you're listening mostly to pop, rock, electronic, if that makes up the bulk of what you listen to, I would have to recommend the HD25. Again, it, does, it serves those genres really well. Another thing I should mention, again, is that it's a little bit more sensitive than the DT1350. So if you're looking for a grab-and-go headphone and that's the type of music you mostly listen to, you're going to most likely plug it directly into uh, an iPod or an iPhone, then the HD25 would be my recommendation, or if you just want to save 100 bucks. But if you want something more reference, and you listen to music in a lot of different genres like I do, I would have to, again, give the advantage to the DT1350, and if you're willing to spring for the extra 100 bucks. Um, it is, again, more reference, and it also, by the way, responds better to amplification, to really good external amplification, than the HD25 does. The HD25 does respond well to being amplified by some of the better headphone amps, but this one just gets bigger sounding. Uh, I know it's a small portable headphone, but to me it has a bigger sound, a much bigger sound than its, than its size and appearance would suggest and more so, a, 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 a bigger sound than the HD25. Uh, so if I had to choose one, if I'm forced to choose one gun to head, I'd have to say I'd choose the DT1350 right now. But luckily, I don't have to choose either because I'm going for both. Drool all over myself. <laughs>